So the last element that we'll talk about in this overview about cognitive services is the concept of cognitive services in containers. Now, if you're not familiar, a container is basically a deployment model that makes you package up your code with all of the dependencies into what's called an image. You compile that up, you create that on your local environment, and then you're just pushing the image from development to staging to production without having to recompile and without all the complexities of deploying multiple things that are all dependent upon each other. So it's a lot simpler deployment model. In the context of cognitive services, being able to deploy cognitive services inside a container means that you can run this cognitive services API in your own environment, not relying on the cloud. So what Microsoft has done is they've taken some of their services, anomaly detector, these language services like text analytics, key phrase extraction, sentiment analysis, and you can basically download a Docker file, a Docker image with this Docker pull request here and basically get a container containing all of that's required to run the cognitive services on your local environment without having to go to the cloud. Now pricing still matters and so they are going to charge you based on consumption. You're going to have to set up your container for this metering data. And yeah, they're basically, they, you, you're not licensed to run without being connected to Azure for metering. So you're not using the cloud to run the, the cognitive service. You're not uploading your images, your text, your speech into the cloud over the open internet to do the analysis. You're doing the analysis on your local and it's just having to do the count by connecting to Azure. So there's a privacy concern. This is going to be faster in some. You can control if you have a very a demanding application, you can basically control the performance of it. There's no SLA associated with this. So Microsoft cannot guarantee you an uptime for running your own containers because that's totally within your control, obviously. But this is another way of deploying cognitive services within your own environment outside of Azure. And certainly if you want to reduce your dependencies on outside forces, such as, you know, Azure regions having regional problems, um, the internet having slowness and lost packets and things like that, you can certainly do that. Now, not every cognitive service is available. So we see the, some of the language services are here but it's not all of them, right? And then for something like speech, you have to, it's a, uh, a request you have to make. So you can't just get your speech to text services running on your local. You do need to let Microsoft know and they will approve you for that. Um, again, with the vision stuff, again, with the big announcement saying uh, they're not basically allowing police services to use Azure Vision Services until um, there's basically laws and regulations around that. So we can see some of the version services are here, but um, like in, or here's an example, the face service is not available for running in a container on your local. Okay. So you can, you can sort of see the availability of different services to run this. So containerized services is good for very specific circumstances. Certainly you, if you don't want to manage these um, servers and the uptime, leave it to Azure and deploy this as a cloud-based service. If you are more concerned with your privacy, the lag time between submitting images and voice and video over the internet for the cloud-based analysis, that could be a consideration for doing this on your local as well.